we're gonna start our essential checkmates lessons by practicing how to give mate with two bishops. If you know how to do it, feel free to skip the lesson and jump on to the next one, but only if you are able to win this position with a minute on the clock. That's it. I'm giving you one minute. Can you win this endgame? If you are under serious time pressure, which may be the case in your games, this is the end game. Remember that whatever time control you play with, it's likely that you will not have much time by the time you reach a position like this and you will want to win it full of confidence. So here I am to boost that confidence in terms of what is the most efficient technique to win this end game. Two bishops and we're going to give mate as quickly and as efficiently as possible. Are you ready for it? Here we go. The starting position has two very passive bishops, so our first goal is to activate the bishops and make sure that they collaborate with each other. How to do that? Well, let's start moving one of them, bishop to g3. This is a great move because it takes this diagonal under its control and takes the f4 and e5 squares away from the black king. The black king is still in the center, but we will want to push it to the back rank. It's gonna take some time and patience, but hey, that's what endgames are about. King to d4, let's say, so that black is trying to stay in the center. And now where would you place the light squared bishop? I hear you saying the right move, which is bishop to f3. And this is a pattern we're gonna learn that the bishops are really cool when they are standing right next to each other, because the two together are creating a fence around the black king. Look at this, the black king is getting logged in. It cannot go to all those red squares thanks to the bishops and to some extent the white king. So we are boxing that king in. Let's continue. King to c4 for instance. What is the move here? The most efficient way to create that cage and make that cage smaller and smaller, each time smaller. Well, we're gonna use now the dark square bishop, bishop to f2. Bishop f2, making sure that we are here again, the two bishops together shooting at this diagonal and that diagonal covering all these squares. You see that the box where the king is, this cage is getting smaller and smaller. This is how we're going to make sure that the black king is forced onto the back rank or the side of the board, depending on where you're looking at it from. We need to make sure that it's going to get to the rim very shortly king to b4 and now i hear you saying yay bishop to yes e2 one more time the same pattern we are using the two bishops next to each other controlling both the light and dark squares around the black king look at this cage it's getting tighter the black king is running out of space it cannot go to the c file anymore it only has the b and a files, which means that very shortly it's gonna run out of squares. And we have only played four moves. Four moves from a very passive position. King to b3, for instance, to stay on the b file. And now we need to think for a moment, because so far we have been very efficient with this two bishops collaborating, taking under control all the light and dark squares around the black king. But now what's next? We cannot really go just bishop to e1 because our king is in the way. So this wouldn't be an efficient move, would it? We don't have the diagonal, the e1, a5 diagonal. Now that means that it's time to think about our king as well because king activity is very important. You know that from the previous endgame chapter in my master method. So king activity is crucial, of course, also in checkmate positions. And therefore, we can play king to d3. Opposition, our king is now taking under control all these squares. The black king cannot go to c4, c3, nor c2. And yeah, for a moment we are stepping in front of our own bishop. But who says that the bishop will stay on e2? No one. King to b4. And now, we need a good move. This isn't going to be that simple because we do love this bishop but the other one it has a block diagonal because of our king maybe king d3 wasn't such a good move 
I'm telling you, it was. But we will not stay on d3. We could think that king to d3 should be the right move, keeping with the opposition. But that is now stepping into the diagonal of the other bishop. So it's not really the method. If you want to stick to the method, and there, of course there are many winning moves, but I'm showing you the most efficient and hopefully the shortest way of winning this position, then let's make sure that our bishops are active. So we need these two diagonals and we need our king to be efficient as well. It's not really doing that much on d3, but it would be way more useful on c2. This is a bit contradictory, right? The king seems to be more active on d3, but I'm telling you on c2, right now it's more useful because it takes away the b3 square and the c3 squares it allows the bishops to be active that means that the three pieces are working very well together and that's what you want in chess that all your pieces are in harmony so now what can the black king do it's running out of space let's just color that cage 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 all logged in the black king has no more squares on the b file it has to go to the rim of the board it's only move six move six and we have achieved what we wanted we pushed the black king onto the rim of the board king to a5 for instance trying to escape from us and now crucial moment really crucial i need you to stop for a moment if you need pause the video what is the best move here for white once again there may be plenty of good moves but there's a really terrible one do not play that horrible horrible move you want to win the game right we don't make a draw which move would make a draw here for white if you can spot it you will not play it in your own games and i will be so proud of you we don't want to play the move that is king to b3 why is it a terrible move because we have been so efficient building this cage around the black king that it has no squares zero it has nowhere to go and it's black to move it's not a check so this is a stalemate oh no this is what you should avoid so we are not going to play king to b3 you don't want to take away all the squares make sure that your opponent's king has always one square to go to at least one square and then you are good king to b3 is a terrible mistake therefore let's just improve and use the king but not to b3 so we have this bishop being very useful the other bishop too is super useful let's not touch them if they are ideally placed we don't need to touch them but the king could do better and we want to take away the b4 square because that's where the black king is coming from so let's make sure he cannot go back king to c3 taking care of the b4 square and now we have a beautiful cage with only one square available for the black king so he goes king to a4 and now how to win we have reached the next stage of this checkmate position we have activated our bishops we are using them as best as possible the two together standing next to each other shooting all the light and dark squares we have managed to push the black king onto the rim of the board. That was the second stage that we wanted to accomplish. And now this is the third and final stage of the checkmate position with two bishops. We need to create a checkmate position. Where do you think the checkmate will be? Can it be on a4, a5? Can the black king be at the rim but somewhere in the middle of the rim? Or we need to push it to the corner or close to the corner? What do you think is the answer? dramatic pause <laughs> we need the king to get closer to the corner it's either gonna be the corner or almost the corner but we need that king to run out of squares and the corner is the best for that so let's just keep pushing the black king toward the corner we can choose which corner we like we can try pushing it toward the a8 corner or the a1 corner which one do you think is easier with the bishops placed on e2 and f2 it's gonna depend always on the particular position you have in this position we're gonna choose the square that's called a1 we're gonna push the black king all the way toward a1 because we can do that very easily thanks to our ideally placed bishops starting with bishop to b6 taking away the a5 square from the black king look at this cage one more time the black king has only one square so it goes to king a3 and now 
I hear you saying the right move is bishop to b5. Perfect! We are taking away another square, making this cage even smaller, resizing it with each and every move we have. King to a2. What's next? This is a tricky position because you may think we always will do the same with the bishops. Bishop to c5, taking away the a3 square, and yeah, we've done it. No, we haven't done it. The black king is not forced into the corner if we play bishop c5 because yeah, we have taken away the a3 square and it cannot go to b3 or b2 either, but it still has the b1 square too and is trying to slip out of our grip. Wants to go to c1 and d1 and escape. So if you don't want the black king to escape, it's, it, this would still be a winning position of course, but it's gonna make our task a little bit longer. If you want to cut it short, then do not allow the black king get onto the b-file again. Instead of bishop to c5, what could be a good move, an even better move for white? You can pause the video if you need to, because I'm gonna tell you the move in 3, 2, 1. It is king to c2. Opposition! There we go! The king is taking care of the b1, b2 and b3 squares, and the cage is still here. And here, what black can do, and will do, is to go back to a3, right? King to a3. Very logical. And he's trying to escape. Our opponent is trying to escape. Go to b4 next move. Will we allow king to b4? Of course not! How to prevent king to b4 with a forcing move? Well, a forcing move should be, in this case, a check. Bishop to c5 check. Hey, here we go! The black king cannot go to a4, nor to b4, nor to b3, nor to b2. Has to go back to a2. And now this is the position we wanted. We are almost there. It's made in two moves. Can you see it? Can you see the final two moves that will give checkmate? If you need some time, pause the video, because it's going to be a forcing mate. Two checks. The second one is checkmate. And it starts with bishop to c4 check. Look at our beautifully placed bishops. This is what we were doing from the very beginning. The two bishops next to each other. One is taking away the a3 square. The other takes away the b3 square. Together with the king, of course. Which is great because our king is as efficient as it can be. And the bishops are making sure that the black king walks into the corner where we deliver. Check. Mate. Good job. Let's go and practice this one more time from a different position and see if you can do it. For our next and final practice position of the mate with two bishops, I have mixed things up a little. You see that the bishops are in their starting positions and the king is on the opposite side of the board. So how will we make sure that those three pieces are collaborating, working together to push that black king toward the rim of the board? That is the main question that you will need to answer Please pause the video for a moment and think about what would be an ideal setup. Remember, schematic thinking in endgames is so important. You need to have a vision of what is it that you want to achieve and how can you get there. So think about this for a moment, how to place the pieces so that you can push the black king toward the rim of the board as efficiently as as quickly as possible. Do you know the answer? Well, it's made in... <laughs> about 15 moves but who cares we just need to make sure that we make a progress with each and every move we take so the first one could be either activating the king king f7 is a good move because the king on g8 is not doing anything about taking space away from the black king and from f7 we are controlling both the f6 and e6 square so this is one of the starting moves that could be really useful or starting to build a fence with the bishops, bishop to g2, because that controls the long diagonal. Let's take a look at this one. But the black king would go to f5, for instance, and now there isn't really a good way to take advantage of the other bishop. We can't go bishop f4 because it would be captured. So maybe this is a good moment for bringing our king. Opposition, taking away these three squares, great stuffs. Now, king to e5, back to the center, and here we have already improved our king, we have the large squared bishop, 
the piece that is not doing much about creating a cage is the dark squared bishop. So let's take advantage of a move like bishop to e3. Now I told you that the bishops should be standing next to each other. This is basically the same. So you don't have to physically place them next to one another as long as they are controlling parallel squares. Squares? Parallel diagonals. That's what I meant. Parallel diagonals. And you see the cage is forming around the black king. He cannot go to these four squares already. The player with the black pieces will have to move to d6 or back to f5. But let's suppose black is trying to keep the king on the e and d files. King to d6. And now that we have this beautiful diagonal for the light squared bishop and the other bishop is working great as well. The cage is here. How can we make sure that the black king is being pushed away closer to the rim? We need the king. Good job. Opposition. King to f6. Let's draw one more time that cage. Cannot go here. Cannot go here. It's getting hot in here. King to d7 would be the only way to keep the king on the d5. And now we have this diagonal for the light squared bishop, but the dark squared bishop is not useful anymore because the black king is far from the b6 and c5 squares, which means that it's time to move the bishop, this bishop, to f4. And we have a newly built fence around the black king here, 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 and here. There aren't many squares available. Look at this. We have only made five moves from a starting position. That was the most passive I could think of. Bishops in their starting squares and the king far away from the action. And here we are, five moves later, the black king is forced to go to the back rank. Only five moves it took to make this position happen. That's why you should be confident about your technique and know these patterns because it can be so easy when you are aware of these ideas. And this is what we are learning together. I hope that you are enjoying the lesson. The king is going back to the back rank. And now it's time to be careful. Be very careful. Because once the king is on the back rank, it means that we are very close to giving mate. But if we are close to giving mate, it also may be the, fa the fact that we are close to creating a stalemate. You don't want to give stalemate. No stalemates, please. No, 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 no. no. What would be the move that gives stalemate in this position? Let's find it so that we never play it. Just remember, this is what you do not want to do with your game. We've got a cage here. Look at the bishops. Beautiful. This is the cage. And that means that if we play king to e7, wanting to be greedy and making that cage as small as possible, it's stalemate. Black to move. It's not a check. Congratulations. You made a draw. No, this is the move you will never play because you are much smarter than this with the king on c8. What we want to do is not allow the king back to d7. So we're going to take away the d7 square, but we are not taking away the d8 square. And that means the move is... Good job. King to e6. Yes, here's that the cage. The black king has only one square that is on d8. King to d8. And now how to continue? Remember, once the king is on the rim... We want to make sure that it's going toward the corner. So this is the third and final stage. How to push this king to one of the corners and which corner shall it be? Well, the one that's easier. So how can we start pushing this king? Can we take away either the e8 or the c8 squares? Not the b8, c8 or b8. Which one is easier? What do you think? Both are possible, but I would suggest we try this because it's Super easy. If you play bishop b7, you take away the c8 square. He goes king e8, and now you play bishop to c7, and you control the d8 square. This is how simple it is when you know the patterns. The king goes to f8. Feels like it's escaping. It's about to go to g7. But now we're going to take a moment to take a deep breath and stop the king from going to g7 by playing not bishop to e5 because if you go there yes you don't allow king to g7 but the black king will go back to e8 and now it wants to go to d8 so we haven't achieved much it's possible that in a practical game you go back and forth you don't have to play the most precise moves unless you have 
10 seconds on the clock then don't play around don't fool around with any move such as bishop e5 then back to c7 then back to e5 but if you have time on the clock it is okay if you don't play the very precise moves as long as you correct yourself and don't repeat three times because your opponent will claim a draw so do not repeat three times the same position make sure that you have the idea the right idea and here the right idea is to control the g7 square with the king king to f6 opposition the king cannot go to g7 what happens if it goes back to e8 well we have the bishop controlling the d8 square and the other bishop gives a check so we are back with the same pattern the parallel diagonals taken away with these bishops king f8 what's next it's easy i know you know it i know you know the answer look at our bishops perfectly placed king to g8 and now what's next the king is about to go to h7 shall we take that square away with the bishop bishop to e4 well it's possible that's a possible move but i think we should already start focusing on the mate idea so we want the king in the corner but we will also need to give a check on the long diagonal in order to give mate and our king is in the way so if we play bishop e5 later that's not gonna be a check nor a mate because our king is on f6 so having that in mind we should move our king to g6 why to take away the h7 square with the king and to free the long diagonal for the bishop and you will see that after king h8 we are about to give mate what's the right move here pause the video and make sure that you are very accurate in your calculation no stalemates please no stalemates i'm repeating careful be careful super careful here bishop to d5 to take away the ga square would be a terrible mistake one more time it is such a perfect cage that it's a draw stalemate it's not a check don't do it you want to play bishop d5 with a check and you also really don't want to give bishop e5 check because that means that the king will come to g8 and now what the king is about to move to f8 so what have we achieved we need to go back to d6 and then he's back on h8 nothing you can repeat once really no pressure you don't have to play the exact most precise engine moves but after having repeated once in case you were trying what the opponent does now we should focus on that precision so let's calculate how the mate shall be carried out it's mate in a few moves so king h8 after king h8 we need to be smart pause the video if you need more time because i'm gonna reveal the solution the mate in three moves it's gonna be mate in three starting with any waiting move and this is the reason if we make a waiting move with the bishop let's say this bishop or the other bishop but keeping the bishops as they are we are just waiting for the black king to go to g8 we still have this diagonal so we can give a check with the light squared bishop controlling the fa square push the black king now into the corner we have this diagonal under the c4 bishop's control and now bishop e5 is mate so one more time oh that's not a good arrow good job anna now it's good one more time with the king on h8 this is just the final position and you need to be extremely careful not to give stalemate so one more time we're gonna repeat this you do want to play bishop d5 because we want to make sure that the black king doesn't move out of the corner right but we cannot play that move because it's gonna be stalemate we need to make sure that bishop d5 comes with a check how to make that move be a check but still control the fa square too that is the reason why we should make a waiting move a waiting move can also be a king move if you like so king h6 and then after king g8 bishop to d5 check look at the diagonals we are controlling king h8 and now bishop mate so you can also make a king move king h6 or as i showed any bishop move that keeps the same diagonals bishop here bishop here even bishop here bishop here as long as you can move then the bishop to the a to g a diagonal and the other bishop to the long diagonal 
it's gonna be made you can try it practice if you like how to get to this position and then you will be full of confidence to win this anytime even if you are under serious time pressure and that's our goal remember so make sure to practice this either on a physical board against an opponent or by analyzing on your own you can also play this online there are tools end game tools that you can look up for instance the chess.com drills that help you practice end game positions and also checkmate positions but make sure to practice you need to put this knowledge into practice and then it will be so easy just like this you're gonna win every single checkmate position with two bishops and now let's move on to the next topic